Now we can machine this open pocket area. So we have an open pocket and we have an island standing up inside that pocket. So for this toolpath, we're going to be picking a couple of different boundaries. We need to pick something so that we can leave an area standing. So I basically want to leave this standing and leave this standing so that I can cut this away. So we'll go to our toolpaths, 2D high speed. And this time I'm going to pick from faces. So I'm going to pick this face. I'm going to pick this face. And by picking that face, it also grabs the boundary of this island. So we're going to OK that. And the toolpath we want to do is called Dynamic Core Mill. So it shows you here something that actually looks similar to the core mill, but it basically works with an open area. The better illustration is here on the cut parameter page where you can see it's doing kind of an open-ended pocket with an island. Now before we get into these parameters, let's go select our tool. Again, I'm going to use the three-quarter inch flat end mill. And we'll say rough the bottom open pocket. For our cut parameters, well, I'll leave this step over at 30%. I'm going to set my stock back to 30 thousandths. We'll leave the micro lift and the back feed rate values the same. For my entry motion, I'm going to change this back to helix. And for our linking parameters, I'm going to set the depth equal to this lower boundary. So it's 350 thousandths deep for this pocket. So let's OK this and see what we get. Well, it doesn't quite look like what we want. Let me turn off my shading. I'll hit Alt-S to turn off shading. And you'll see that what it's actually doing is cutting away this boundary area. Let's just go to a straight top view and you'll see it better. So it thought we wanted to cut inside of this face and around everything else. And the reason for that is because when you're picking these boundaries for this particular toolpath, it's looking for the biggest open area. It doesn't know which one is the pocket and which one is the island. It does it based on the volume of the area. So when I picked this top face here, this must actually have a greater surface area than the pocket. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our own containment area for that. To do that, I'm going to tell it to create curves on all edges. And then I'm going to pick from a solid selection. And I'm going to only pick face. So I'm going to turn off Select Body, and I'm going to pick this face up here. So it's going to look at that face and put edge curves on everything that's there. And I'll end my selection. And we'll OK that. So we can see we have a boundary covering all those edges. So let me go to my Level Manager. I'll hit Alt-Z to turn off or on my visible layers. And for now, I'm going to turn off these curves. And I'm going to turn off my solid. And we'll OK that. So I've got some other geometry here I really don't need. I'll hold down my Shift key, and I'm going to pick all these circles. And then I'll pick this boundary. And I'll just hit Delete to get rid of those. And I'll right click and go to a top view. So what I want to do is just create some kind of a boundary to close that off. Actually, with that toolpath selected, let me turn off that toolpath display too. For my boundary, I'm going to say create a line, and I'm going to tell it to do a multi-line. Now a multi-line is just a continuous zigzag type line. And I'm going to start from out here, and I'm going to cut across to here, and then over to here, 
and then down to here somewhere. And I'll hit escape for my last line. So this doesn't have to be perfect as long as it doesn't overlap this inside boundary of the pocket. Now I'm going to switch to my trim command and I'm going to do a trim to and I'm going to trim this line to this line and this line to this line. When you're picking these, make sure you're always picking the side that you want to keep. Once those are selected, we'll say OK. And then I'll hold down my Shift key and pick that remaining boundary and delete that. Now I have an area that will be smaller than the pocket that I want to machine. Let me do an Alt-Z, turn my solid back on, and we'll try this again. Now since we already have a toolpath, we already have our parameters set, I'm just going to click on geometry here so that I can reselect my geometry. I'm going to right click in here and say rechain all. The first thing I want to pick is from the wireframe. I'll pick that boundary. And for my second set of profiles, I'm going to select from the solid and I'm going to make sure face is active. And then I'll pick this face. We'll OK that. OK here. And we'll regenerate that dirty operation. Now let's turn the toolpath display on for that. And there we have our cut. So the dynamic core mill allows you to cut open-ended pockets and open-ended pockets with islands. The key to using it is to make sure that the pocket boundary is the biggest boundary of all the boundaries that you select.